What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be making a Detroit bass pluck sound from scratch in Ableton using the stock plugins that you have at your disposal. So if you're ready for this one, let's get right into it. Hey! Okay guys, this is a quick sample. This is going to be the final result when we're finished. So that's what we're going to be ending up making, but let's go ahead and close this out. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and make a new MIDI track. All right, so go into your instruments here and grab a wavetable from Ableton. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing this waveform right here to a saw dual one. This is the best one that works for me. Go ahead and feel free to change it if anything works better for you. So this is what we're sounding like right off the bat. Okay. And what I'd like to do is actually turn it up somewhere around 60 to 70-ish. Gives it a little more of a fuzzy sound than just sitting right on the bottom there. So next what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna turn this to none because we're not gonna use any of these modulating things right here. And we're gonna go ahead and turn this down negative 24 semitones, which is two octaves. That way you on C3, you can play the bass note without having to go down a bunch of octaves and screw it all up. So that's what we're sounding like right now. All right, let's start going ahead and affecting these. Now we're gonna turn this on right here by clicking this button. And we're gonna change this to match this one. So it's gonna be the same as that one. Um, on the second dial here, let's turn this all the way over. And on the first dial, let's go ahead and turn this up and turn this somewhere about 86-ish. I'm gonna turn this frequency back to like 83.6. Now guys, all these values are the ones that I found are better, but you can literally tweak them just a little bit up or down and see if it sounds better to you. Um, so feel free to do that once you get a good bass going. So now we have more of a bassy tone, right? It's not really giving us that zappy high end that we want, but we're gonna get there just to wait. Okay, next we're gonna go into our envelopes here. So the first one is our amp, and this is gonna be what's controlling the overall sound. So how is the overall sound reacting? So we're gonna turn this sustain all the way down here. We're gonna put our attack somewhere around like three milliseconds, like three, 3.7. Four should work, four should be fine. Our decay, we're probably gonna put like one millisecond here, or one second. And release, we can go for like 41, somewhere around here. And you'll notice now that it's a little bit shorter. It's not like an 808, now it's like a pluck. So it's like a dun, dun, dun. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our envelopes here and we're just gonna fix these up a little bit. And what the envelopes are gonna allow us to do is modulate certain things in here so that they're following a certain curve, okay? So on this first one right here, we're gonna pull the attack back pretty much all the way here. Let's put the decay up just a little bit there and we'll bring this like pretty much all the way down here. For the release, we're gonna pull this all the way back to pretty much 19. We don't really need much of a release on this. And now let's go ahead and jump to the next envelope here. The next envelope, we're gonna leave the attack where it is. Let's go for a longer decay on this one. We're gonna bring this sustain down again and we'll leave the release where it's at. We're not gonna do anything with the LFOs or anything like that. So now we can go into our matrix here, and this is where we're gonna start using some of these envelopes to modulate things. Okay, so we're gonna be modulating in our matrix, but we wanna modulate the frequency here on this knob. So go ahead and click on this knob right here. Just click on it so that it sits right here so that you see filter one frequency on the bottom. So all you gotta do is literally just click inside of it. You see that it's got the four corners around it. Now it knows that's what we wanna modulate. So we're gonna modulate this with the envelope two that we created earlier. Okay, so we're gonna put this one up to 33. And you'll see that now it's actually starting to sound like how we want it to. It's not just a bassy tone. So what that's allowing it to do is to follow this envelope too that we made right here. Our frequency is kind of following this. So it's kind of going up quick and then coming down. And then that's the value right there that sounds good. And you can play with this a little bit. but you probably wouldn't want to go too far above or below it, but you could play around with that a little bit. This right here seems to be the best value. 
We're gonna take this one, and we're gonna pull this down just a tiny bit. Awesome, so now let's go into our MIDI here. And we're gonna leave this, and we're gonna get rid of this one right here. So just double click on this, and it's gonna put it back to zero, and it should be gone. All right, let's go into our MPE tab now. And we're gonna get rid of everything except for this amp here. So let's double click on this one and double click on this one. All right. All right, now let's go over into our final bar over here and we're gonna change this to mono. So don't click on that until it says mono. And then we can set this glide around 30 milliseconds, but you can change this when you make your um, patterns and things like that. But this will let you glide between notes. All right, guys, and there we have our bass sound. Now let's go ahead and spice it up a little bit. We'll go ahead and throw Ableton Saturator on it. Now you can pick what kind of a clip you want to do in here. I like the medium curve. I think the medium curve sounds really good on it. Uh, you can just slap that bad boy on it, and you're pretty much good to go. You could even turn up the drive a little bit if you wanted. And there you have a Detroit bass pluck sound. Now, if you want to save this so that you don't have to keep making it over and over again, what you're going to do is you're going to highlight this one, hold down shift or command and highlight this one as well. And then you're going to press command G if you're on Mac or control G if you're on Windows. And that's going to go ahead and make this an effect rack for you. Now, what you can do from here is you can go down into this little button right here that's save. And you can go ahead and save this as your Detroit bass pluck. And now it's going to be saved there for you. And then what you can do is you can say show in finder. And it's going to pop up your finder. Otherwise, if you're on Windows, it's going to be show in your Windows Explorer or whatever it's called. And then you can go ahead and copy this. And you can drag it into the folder where you have your samples or where you have your effect racks or whatever you want to do with it. And then all you have to do is literally double click on it and it'll pull this up for you and you can go in here and maybe play with some of the values maybe play with the frequency to make it sound a little bit different but there you have it you have a detroit pluck synth sound from scratch using only ableton plugin all right guys so that's going to wrap up the video had to do this one by popular demand had a couple people asking me about it so you know i had to deliver this one to you guys right away Anyways, guys, if you like this video, make sure to smash that like button for me. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because we're uploading videos all the freaking time, man, to help you get better in Ableton, and you're not going to want to miss out on any of them. And besides that, I'll be catching you badass motherfuckers in the next one. Peace out.